This is my Garmin Phoenix 6X Pro. It has done everything with me from racing over mountains to ultra distance runs that lasted deep into the night and even whizzed around the occasional park run. It was my favorite and most important piece of fitness equipment, but yesterday I went and bought this, the new Garmin Phoenix 7X Sapphire Solar. Now it's only been 24 hours, so I'm not gonna dive too deeply into the endless list of features and functions on here, but I am gonna try and answer the question, if you buy this watch, particularly if you already own an older Garmin, will you, one day after unboxing the thing, still be delighted with your purchase or suffering from severe buyer's remorse and wondering what, if any difference, there really is between the two? Actually, that's the seven, that's the six. First up, I have paid for my Garmin with my own money. Garmin don't send me products for review or freebies of any sort, probably because I have no idea who I am. I own many Garmin products. They're sat navs, bike computers, heart rate monitors, and I like a lot of what they do. But equally, when they produce something utterly useless, I will happily say so. For example, their Vector 3 power meter pedals. A more reliable means of establishing power output would be to fit your bicycle with a child seat and then have a toddler just yell random numbers as you ride along. So so, Phoenix 7, this is the box. I'm not doing an unboxing. Imagine me taking the watch out of there. It would have looked just like that. Only thing left in there is the charging cable, no different to the cable used by the Phoenix 6, and a manual packaging, pretty typical Garmin, smart and functional. And this is it. The Phoenix coming in three sizes, 42 mil, that's the small S model, 47 mil, standard size, and 51 mil for the big X. There's then three levels of spec. Base spec can be had on the S and standard size only, gives you music, Garmin Pay, Wi-Fi, downloadable maps, 16 gig onboard storage, the new touch screen, and all the software features. Solar spec can then be had on all three sizes, gives you solar for longer battery life, and then there is Sapphire Solar, which adds multiband GPS for better tracking, onboard storage up to 32 gig, Sapphire glass, and a titanium bezel. Lastly, if you get the X, only available in that solar or sapphire solar spec, it's got a built-in flashlight. So this is pretty much top spec, 7X sapphire solar. In the UK, a £1,050 price is often quoted as the cost of the top model, but that refers to this with a titanium bracelet. With a standard strap like this, £859.99. Now, if you already have a Phoenix, particularly the 6, the very first thing you're going to do when you take the 7 out of the box is compare them and hope that you see something immediate that will justify your expenditure. Spoiler alert, you won't. Diameter, thickness, weight. If there's a difference, it is fractions of millimeters and grams, and you will not be able to tell. This seven sits identically on the wrist to the old one. Now, having said that, I always found the X size to be absolutely perfect for me. I'm six foot six, 220 pounds. My wife, Jenna, wears the 6S, the small one, and that fits her perfectly at five foot six and 120 pounds. What suits you will depend on your own dimensions and also the general preference you have for a sports watch's size. For me, the X is a lump, but it's not quite into the realms of ridiculous. And in simple terms, if this were available in the 80s, it would have looked spot on being worn by Arnold in any of his movies, and that is good enough for me. There are, when you look real close, some very minor cosmetic changes to the surround. The only thing of real interest there, though, is these little shoulders they've now put on the stop-start button, which Garmin says will make it harder to accidentally press that button when you're pulling on a jacket, for example, which actually is a nice touch. I've been in the middle of longer runs, throwing my backpack or race vest back on after taking it off and getting something out of it, and worried that it would catch on that button and then stop the activity that I'm tracking. So we like that. The back, Garmin's V4 heart rate monitor sensor, which is uh, now their latest version and their standard heart rate tracking system they use, and the standard charging port identical to previous models. Also, the quick release strap system is still the same, which is handy for me because I've got a bunch of different colored straps for the six that will still work on this. And on the 7X, there is that built-in torch, a little LED, which actually is surprisingly bright. It can also be adjusted up and down if you want, and even switch to red light mode in case you wanna, I don't know, see where you drop your popcorn in the cinema without dilating your pupils and wrecking your night vision. When I read that was gonna be on there in the specs, I thought that sounded a bit of a gimmick, but actually that may get way more use than I'd have thought. Certainly it is perfect for everyday tasks like finding a light switch in a dark room. It's actually not far off the brightness provided by the LED in the back of my iPhone 13, for example. So side by side, 
Apart from the torch, you may be wondering, as I was at first, whether this is much of an upgrade at all. And if this is your first Phoenix, thinking it looks very like the six you could have got now pretty cheaply, not to mention these are gonna be even easier to get second hand. But then you power it up and yeah, it still looks exactly the same. Probably. Now my 6X always had a screen that displayed blacks a bit washed out, almost bluish. Jenna 6S had perfect dark blacks in comparison. Now I wasn't alone in having that dull screen. Plenty of people discussed it online when the 6 came out. One theory was that Garmin changed the supplier of their screens mid-production, so some people got the dull one and then later ones got the nice high contrast one. Either way, the 7 has a screen showing blacks just fine. So whether you've seen improvement depends on your existing model Phoenix. For me, while washed out, colors look fine in isolation, actually seeing them side by side like this, it is clearly nice to now have a better looking screen. That issue aside, no real change in display visually from the 6. Only thing that stands out now is on the 7. This is a solar version. My 6X Pro was non-solar, so you can see the skinny little solar panel around the face on the 7. In fact, before we move on, let's talk about the solar. I never had any battery issues with my 6 at all. It would stay charged for days. I did 17, 18 hour races with it with constant activity tracking on, no problem. I can't remember a single time actually where the battery life was ever an issue. Now, if you get the seven non-solar base spec, which would be the S or standard size version only because the X doesn't come in a base spec, they've bumped battery life up by 30 to 60% depending on how you're using it. So unless you are doing multi-day non-stop activity tracking, or just hate charging it, you're not likely to find power an issue. With the solar, the thing will do five days with GPS tracking on. In standard watch mode, it's gonna last over a month. So for me, having solar is an upgrade on top of a battery upgrade, and it is now pretty much bulletproof in that regard. And while I'm not likely to drain it on anything I ever do, it is nice to know that sticking it on charge is just something that I can do once every couple of weeks and never get close to running low. Certainly, if I go away for the weekend, off racing or something, I don't have to worry about taking charging cables. So, getting into other features that are different. And the biggest one is the touch screen. That display looks the same as before, but now you can swipe away at it the way you can on most other smartwatches. More on that in a moment. First of all, features more generally. I have never used, probably in common with most Phoenix owners, more than five, maybe 10% of things available to use on the six. And now there's even more things for me to not use. And importantly, some of those are gonna get made available to previous model Phoenix owners via software updates. So not only was there nothing really in terms of software features that I was missing, if there were, they may show up on the old watch soon anyway. Now your use of the Phoenix may well differ to me. For example, Jenna's 6S Pro never leaves her wrist unless she's dressing up to go out. So she takes advantage of things like tracking calories, uh, steps, stress levels, watching for types of training shortfalls, basically all the stuff that you really need to have the watch on you all the time to benefit from. My problem is that I don't wear it 24 seven. I've done videos in the past where I moaned that you couldn't jump between a big device like this for training and then a smaller Garmin like this thing for nighttime or casual use. And actually you can, but they don't talk to each other properly. So you end up with half your data on one, half on the other. In fact, the inability to have a neat 24 seven solution is what made me go with an aura ring for tracking sleep and recovery and then leave the Garmin for exercise monitoring only. So the slight improvements they've made to things that are geared around this being used as a 24 seven fitness tracker may not matter much to me. I say may not. My plan is to wear this a lot more than I wore the six and see if some of that data that gets generated is interesting enough to warrant that type of use. To be honest, I doubt it. I'll give you an example of improvements. You always used to be able to go into your running VO2 max display and see a race predictor for your theoretical 5K, 10K and so on. Now, when you do that, you get a little graph and that shows whether that's trending up or down. You go into your heart rate settings. It allows you to look at historical levels by swiping across the graph. And in the calorie burn function, it's now got a projected total calories for the day. If that sort of stuff gets you excited, cool. For me, it's more a case of going, oh, that's interesting and a bit clever, and then probably never looking at it again. For example, I like to know that my resting heart rate overnight is tracking at a certain level over time. I don't need to know that it went from 45 beats to 47 beats at 2 a.m. Now, all that said, there are also some possibly cool new features that I may play with a bit more. One that looks pretty interesting is the stamina feature. That's designed to show your short-term and long-term ability to keep going at a current activity. So for example, if you were doing a run, doing an interval session and coming to the end of that particular interval, your short-term ability to continue may be massively depleted, 
but your long-term ability, allowing for rest and so on, still good. It's gonna be interesting to get some long runs in with this and see if the gradual decline of my long-term ability does indeed fit with what the watch says I'm running out of in terms of juice. There are then some recovery and suggested training features that have been added where Garmin will give you advice on what you should and shouldn't be doing based on what it sees you have done and what your current state of readiness is. Again, it's one I'm gonna to have to watch over time. In the past, I've never found that the Garmin tracking of overall exercise load was that good for me. My low, medium, and high intensity work done has never quite tallied with what the watch said I should do or have done as far as it's concerned. So I'm not convinced that Garmin's ability to work out what I need, and I'm certainly not convinced it can work out what I want to do, which might not always be what I need to do anyway. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna keep an eye on those features. If they prove more useful than I suspect, I will report back. One thing that may be particular to me is that because I do quite a bit of heavy lifting training, that isn't always tracked very well, certainly not as well as cardio activities. So for example, a heavy leg session in the gym might leave me unable to run the next day, but the watch won't necessarily have seen it as particularly draining. Hence, I still need to use my common sense, obviously, when deciding how to go out and train that day. And so the big one for me, and the one anybody upgrading is gonna be excited about, is touchscreen. I had an Apple Watch for a while, and when I got rid of it, because it definitely failed the would Arnold wear this geeky nonsense in 1984 test, the two things I thought I would miss that would be great to see on a future Garmin was firstly, the ability to have your phone in your pocket or your backpack, and then when a call comes in, not just have your watch tell you that that's happened, which it does, but be able to take the call and speak to the caller without having to get the phone out talking into your wrist effectively, or dictate a text back to a message sent to your phone. So not a full on phone on your wrist like the latest Apple Watch is, but better integration with a phone that you're carrying, uh, maybe the Phoenix 8. The other thing was a touch screen, but not for everything, which was a downside to the Apple Watch. I am happy with buttons for 90% of what I do on this. And they're actually better than a touch screen for loads of different things. For example, at the start of a race, I'm stood like this, ready to hit that button and go. I'm not like this, ready to look at it and swipe and nonsense. Same with pausing the timer, hitting a lap button, doing it all in the dark or the rain. Buttons are just best. But for moving between settings, scrolling through stuff that doesn't fit on the screen, going into various setup modes, a touch option is great and quick, especially as there are a couple of shortcuts that now exist because of it. For example, to access my body battery from the main screen, I would previously have had to select the body battery option with one button, scrolling down to find it, and then go into it with another button, and then scroll through the body battery options with that first button again. Now, I just swipe down from the home screen, select it, and there's all my data. Another nice touch is that if I have data displayed on the home screen, the watch screen, for example, my VO2 max, I can press and hold that information. It will shortcut me straight to the VO2 max settings. And that works with any data displayed on that home screen. So for example, heart rate options, press and hold, straight into heart rate. Possibly the biggest advantage of touchscreen though is in relation to maps. On the six, when I wanted to move around the map, for example, to look ahead on the trail and see where a junction was coming up, I'd have to use the buttons first to select whether I wanted to zoom in or pan, and then having done that, use the buttons again to carry out that function, either zooming backwards or forwards or switching to panning and then going left and right and up and down. It was all very Blade Runner. Track 45 right, stop, center and stop. Enhance 34 to 46. Pull back. Wait a minute. Go right. Now you can scroll around the screen as you would do on your phone and then zoom in and out with the two buttons on the left or double tap on the screen to go in. Massive improvement. And on some of the long trail runs that I do where I'm following a map that the race organizers would have distributed out in advance, that is really important. That could literally make the difference between taking a wrong turn or not. So 24 hours in, I've worn it nonstop. Did an indoor bike ride with it last night, tracked that, could be running later, played with it all morning, fiddled about the data, swiping all over the place. Got a good feel for it. Is it a good upgrade from the six? Yes, it is, but, and there are some serious buts. What am I really getting for the difference between the purchase price of the seven and the second hand price of this, the six, which is ultimately what it would end up costing me, probably about 500 pounds. A torch, a touch screen, they are nice. They're definite upgrades, but 500 pounds worth? I'm getting a monster battery life, but it's way beyond what I need. The multiband GPS is supposed to be a real step up, but I've never actually had an issue with location tracking as it was on the six. 
the software updates, the training and recovery metrics, those aren't big deals for me, and some are gonna filter down to the older model anyway, so even if they were, I may not have needed to upgrade, I could have just waited and got them on the six anyway. So I think to answer the simple question, is it worth it? I need to consider the three most likely scenarios. Firstly, you have no sports watch, or are trying to make do with a smart watch that's got a fraction of the functionality, uh, something like an Apple watch. Then, if your budget allows, get this, because it is pretty much the best exercise tracking watch there is. You will not be disappointed, and you won't have to upgrade again for years, unless that Phoenix 8 does drop with a built-in phone. Second scenario, is you do have a decent sports watch already, like the six, and you're a normal person, which means you don't use all the functions as it is, and regard the 500 pound cost to change as significant. I think you may wonder if you could have just bought a torch for a fiver and saved yourself a stack of cash. I think there's gonna be quite a few people questioning whether after a couple of years waiting for an upgrade to the six, this has really left them satisfied. I'm sure a lot will be sold because people have been hungry for a new Phoenix model for a while, but I think buyer's remorse is gonna be not uncommon. And the third option is again, somebody with an existing quality watch, but who does use all of the clever training, tracking, recovery functionality, and so finds the idea of those being enhanced and added to really appealing. And on top of that, doesn't regard 500 pound as too big a deal you will get a clearly better product and the price of doing so, not a huge concern. And that could be where this video ends with the advice that it is an amazing bit of kit, but not a huge leap forward given how much it will cost. So make a decision on that basis. But that would be to ignore the Garmin Epix Gen 2. Seeing that after you got this could be where the real regret sets in. In a nutshell, it is a Phoenix with an AMOLED display that once you see it next to a Phoenix will ruin the screen on this forever inky dark blacks, high contrast, vibrant colors, the thing looks very, very good. And in a world with iPhone 13s and 4K TVs, it's a bit more compatible with what we expect a screen to look like nowadays. Now it only comes in 47 mil size and doesn't have solar and that display will suck the power, but it's still gonna last ample time for 99% of users to get their activities tracked. Garmin quote 30 hours in GPS mode. And to be honest, stick it on charge once a week rather than once every couple of weeks, is that a big deal? Probably not. Not if what you get for that effort is that great screen. I think getting the Phoenix, whatever you currently own, without having a proper look at the Epix would be a big mistake unless you're absolutely certain it's not for you. In fact, it'll be interesting to look at the sales numbers because I'd guess 90% of Phoenix owners would get everything they want from the Epix. So I'm not sure that it won't become the bigger seller. For me, I was right on the fence with this one. The thing that finally tipped me in favor of the Phoenix 7 was that I wanted the big size mostly. And then the way Garmin are marketing this sort of fitted with my own interpretation of what the watches are about. This might sound daft, but Garmin pushed this, the 7, with the feel that it is a tool to get you from one adventure to the next. But the Epix, that's a sporty watch that's as much at home checking your texts in a Starbucks as checking your pulse in a spin class. It does look good, and I'm sure if I had one right in front of me, looking at it now, I may feel a bit different. They're actually hard to get in the UK right now without a bit of a wait. But I have a feeling Arnold would go into the jungle with this and a cigar, not the Epix and the skinny latte. This screen on the Phoenix, not as bright, not as sexy, but as a result, it does have a slightly more functional, rugged look to it. When I think where this is gonna be used by me, running trails, crawling around obstacle courses, uh, kayaking, biking, the gym, it's an essential bit of kit, not a cool gadget. So I'm happy, just. More reviews and updates to come as I get to play around with it. So if you have any questions, want me to test anything in particular, just let me know, stick it down below in the comments. Otherwise, like and subscribe if this was of any use or interest, and I will see you on the next one.